I got a call directly from the company's chief compliance officer. Now, when I tell you I was literally sh What's up guys, it is your boy Jerome back at it with another video. I don't know why I did that, whatever. As you guys have probably noticed, it has been well over a year since I've put up any sort of finance or investment banking video. And I guess I never actually really explained why. And that's because I wasn't allowed to. But now I'm here to bring you the truth it's really not super exciting, but I'm gonna tell you the story anyway. Over the last year, instead, I have been making a bunch of vlogs, food-related content, honestly, anything that just popped up into my head that was not related to finance or investment banking. But if you haven't noticed, everything has been kind of slowing down significantly for me. Views, likes, subscribers, all of it. And that means YouTube income. And like I said, I never really talked about it until right now. So let's go all the way back to around March, April timeframe of 2021, which was around the time that I was about to graduate from my MBA program and officially join an investment bank as an associate. Now, this company knew that I had a YouTube channel and they were fine with it. It never really came up. It never really created any issues until this time. And I think it's because when I interned at this company, I wasn't yet monetized on YouTube. I had just hit a thousand subscribers, but didn't have like the, the watch hours to actually start making income. But now fast forward to March slash April of 2021, when I was monetized on YouTube, I was filling out my pre-employment paperwork. And one of the questions they ask on you is, do you make any outside income? And again, at that time, I had just been monetized. I felt like a big badass making probably 20 bucks a month. Yeah, I was cool. Now, all joking aside, I made sure to disclose that to them because I wanted to make sure I was doing everything legally. I didn't know if it was going to be an issue that I was making outside income. I didn't think so because, again, it was 20 bucks a month. But I wanted to make sure that they knew, which I thought they did already know. So I had multiple discussions with the HR department and they made sure to review every single one of my finance related videos that I had made. And eventually we came to the agreement that I could continue making my videos just as long as one, I never mentioned the firm by name and two, I never released any non-public information to my subscribers, which is just a fancy way of saying, don't give out our clients information to random people on the internet. So I was gonna continue making just general investment banking news, you know, how to recruit, things that I found interesting about financial news, crypto, whatever I could think about that was related to finance. That was until probably three or four weeks later. I got a call directly from the company's chief compliance officer. Now, when I tell you I was literally shitting up my pants when I got this phone call, she told me that unfortunately, regardless of all the conversations that I'd been having with the HR team, it would in fact be a compliance violation for me to post any type of finance content on social media, let alone YouTube. Pause. I wanna just take a second to point out that at the time, I was really, really upset about this because I was just thinking from the perspective of why are they telling me what I can and cannot say? Now, looking back on it, I actually kind of realized that Yes, they were protecting themselves, but honestly, they were kind of protecting me too. I don't know anything about anything. I could have said something dumb on the internet and people would have been coming after me. People being the government, people being like FINRA, like it would have been like a legal issue. But you know I wasn't going down without a fight. So naturally, I prepared a list of potential video ideas and asked for a call with HR and compliance. Honestly, it kind of felt like I was going into like a pitch meeting with like a bunch of Hollywood executives that were about to shoot me down. I asked if I could make videos about financial news, things that were already in the Wall Street Journal. It can't be insider information if it's already public and out there. They said no. I asked if I could make general investment banking videos. What is a sim? What does the M&A life cycle look like? How do you recruit? They said no. And honestly, my best idea, 
I asked if I could interview the friends that I had made at UNC, the ones that also became investment bankers after we graduated, just to find out how their investment banking experience was, what they did in their life to get there, why they were interested in it. They said no. But shameless plug for the Rome's Room podcast, which is now out on Tuesdays right here on YouTube or on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you can get podcasts. Make sure to check that out. And make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any of those episodes. The head of compliance then went on to tell me there were an infinite number of one-off video ideas that I could give her, but she just didn't have the bandwidth to vet every single one of those ideas, so it was gonna be a blanket no. Then she asked me, what would I rather want my $20 that I was making off of YouTube or my salary that I was getting paid from the bank. So I didn't really have a choice. Um, the choice was kind of made for me, but I didn't really think it would be that big of a deal. I was like, okay, I'm not going to make these finance videos, but what I will do instead is I will make just any type of video that I can and people will still watch. People love me or so I thought. I had gained all of these subscribers based off of those finance videos. And I guess I just hadn't realized that at the time. But as soon as I stopped making those finance videos and started making these quote unquote like fun videos, people stopped watching. Those old videos would get a couple thousand views. Whereas this new content that I was making, if I was lucky, would get a couple hundred. But like a phoenix, I am back from the dead because now that I quit my job, I can do whatever I want. Well, not exactly whatever I want because I have a new job, but I can do this again, I think. That's right. To be completely honest with you, it is all love for the last firm that I worked for. I get it now. And they were very good to me all the time that I was there. It's just like I told them when I left during my exit interview, I don't think I could have had a better experience in investment banking than working for them. And yeah, they really developed me a lot professionally. So very much appreciate everything they've done for me. As for you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope you can understand why I wasn't making finance videos or why I couldn't talk about it. If you enjoyed this video or you're just excited for more investment banking content or more finance videos in general, make sure to smash that like button. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss anything. Make sure to hit that notification bell. As always, I'm your boy Jerome, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace! I don't like the way that I squinted my eye there. Anyway, peace. Wait.